In this video lesson, I would like to demonstrate my favorite way for performing deep pressure into the back of the neck, the cervical spinal posterior musculature, with minimal effort because of how we position the client. Right now we have our client Anya and she's lying in pure sideline position on her right side and therefore the left side of her neck is oriented up toward the ceiling. If we have her in pure sideline as we do right now, then the structures that are oriented straight up to the ceiling are the transverse processes of the cervical spine and they're pointy and it does not feel good and it's not therapeutic to perform any type of deeper pressure, even moderate pressure, essentially mashing soft tissue into pointy bone, pointy transverse processes. The tissue in the back of the neck that most often warrants the deeper work is the paraspinal transversospinalis musculature, the semispinalis multifidus rotatories, and that musculature is located just off the spinous processes, between the spinous processes and the articular processes, the facets. And right now, that tissue, that musculature, is oriented not perfectly toward the ceiling, but rather somewhat posteriorly. The idea is this. Whenever we're looking to place force into the client's body, we can get that force in one of two ways. We can get it for free from body weight by simply positioning our body over the client and leaning down. That's free. It takes just about no effort, and that's what I want to employ whenever I can. If I don't use body weight, then I'm going to have to supplement that force with muscular effort. And certainly I'm going to want to use larger muscles than smaller muscles because it's easier for the larger musculature. But still, my first goal, whenever I can, is to use body weight. To do that, since gravity acting on the mass of my body, creating body weight, only goes in one direction, and that's straight from superior to inferior, then I want to orient the area of her body that I'm working to be oriented straight up to the ceiling so I can drop straight down. As I've stated right now, in sideline, the transverse processes are oriented there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate her body, her entire body, 45 degrees away from me. Now, essentially, if I have her in position here, I can simply push her over about 45 degrees. Now, very often when we do this, if the client first had their thighs at their hip joints flexed quite a bit, Anya, could you do that, please? Show the camera. Then that impedes the ability to push the person over because her knees bang into the table. So we need to lessen the amount of flexion at the hip joint. Would you lessen that? And now I can easily rotate her 45 degrees. Now we also very often notice then that the client is quite far away from us on the table. And then we have to bend way over the table, especially if the table is wide and they're at the center of the table. Anya, can I have you scoot back toward me, bringing your right shoulder closer to me, your bottom closer, there we go, and now I want you rotated 45 degrees. Now the next issue we very often has is the head has to be supported, but there has to be room for the nose to go so her nose is not mashing into the table and she can comfortably breathe. And we have this cradle, the face cradle, set up as the cushion, as the pillow, with a space there allowing that to occur. If everything is set up correctly, I can now evaluate and say, if I drop a plumb line and go straight down on her neck, I'm going to go into this musculature right here. In this transversospinalis paraspinal musculature, as I stated, we have semispinalis, multifidus, and rotatories. Many therapists do not fully appreciate that the semispinalis capitis is the thickest muscle in the posterior neck and most often needs the deeper pressure.
It's deep to upper trap and very often therapists will blame tightness in this upper cervical region on the upper trap when in fact it's actually semispinalis capitis. And deep to semispinalis capitis is semispinalis cervicis. So I really want to get this transversospinalis semispinalis musculature oriented to the ceiling. And if I have it that way, I can stand up and I can choose to use whatever contact I want to work on this musculature. So now let's change the view just a little bit so you have a bit more of a close-up of the work being done here. Now with a different angle, let's explore how we're going to actually perform the stroke up the neck. So I have Anya turned 45 degrees. I have the paraspinal musculature oriented straight to the ceiling so I can best utilize body weight. And now I have choices of contacts. I could use thumb pads like this, reinforced thumb pads. And I'll pull my fingers back so I'm not pressing in the front of her neck. I could use the ulnar side of my hand. But the contact I prefer for this technique is to use my forearm. Now I have a choice when I use my forearm. I could use the distal forearm that's smaller. I could use the proximal forearm that's larger. And my choice there largely depends on how much room I have access to the neck. Very often I tend to use the distal forearm because there's not a lot of space here. At least there isn't right now with this positioning of her shoulder girdle and neck and head. I also have the choice of coming down with the border of my ulna, the medial border of my ulna, which is a sharper contact by bone, or I could pronate my forearm just a little bit toward the fleshier, where I have more musculature here, which will be a softer contact, whether it's distal or proximal. So these are choices we can make that based on what seems best with that particular client at that moment. So I'll show the stroke here. I already have a little bit of lotion on her. I'm going to put a bit more so we don't braid the skin. And I simply place my forearm here, and I am right on the semispinalis, let's say. And I have two choices. I can either use my deltoid primarily and or my body weight going up to transcribe a stroke going from inferior to superior. Or I could pronate my forearm and transcribe an arc with the ulna more this way. And then my body positioning would stay more static in place here. Or I could do both. Now, when performing the technique this way, what we see is there's not a lot of access to the neck. So I rarely perform it exactly this way. I usually add in another piece that I'll demonstrate now. And that is I'm going to contact the superior aspect of her shoulder girdle here. And I'm going to traction her shoulder girdle down in the frontal plane toward depression. So to do this, Anya, my hand's going to go around to the front of your chest area and I'm going to grab her shoulder girdle. If you had just been massaging this and there's lotion here and you can't get a good grip, then put a small terry cloth towel here or use the sheeting if you're working with draping, certainly. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop back with my body and I'm going to traction her shoulder girdle down toward depression. Very important, don't pull her back toward retraction. First, you'll lose your 45 degree angle and probably end up hitting the transverse processes. Second, you'll torque her spine. So make sure you're forced to traction the shoulder girdle down is straight in the frontal plane. I drop back on my left foot there and then as I do that, I come around onto my right foot and I create the stroke. And we can see that there's more space to access the neck here and I can just perform the strokes this way. And I really want to make the point that I have a depression force on the shoulder girdle here and a force going superiorly here, and it really comes with how you rotate your pelvis at your hip joints. So let's demonstrate that again, around there, relax there. And I perform the strokes like this. When I get to the top of the stroke, I have a choice. I can press into the suboccipital musculature. 
I can grab the ridge of the occiput and traction it a bit, or I can go over the occiput onto the occipitalis musculature on the back of the occiput here, or any combination thereof. So this is the essential stroke here. Now, if I want even more access to the neck, I could remove the cushion, the face cradle cushion, and now her head and neck drop into even more lateral flexion, which opens up the neck even more. And just make sure that her nose is comfortable down there. She can breathe. It's not being smashed into the table. And now we have even more of something I didn't mention with the shoulder girdle depression, but I should mention now. The tissue we're working is being worked on stretch, depressing the shoulder girdle, laterally flexing the head and neck away, creates a stretch of the semispinalis, the other lateral flexion musculature here. So we're getting deep work by using body weight coming down, transferring force from rear foot to forward foot, but we're doing this work also on stretch. Now, not everyone can comfortably tolerate this kind of pressure, and I really want to make the point that no one technique is correct for every client in every circumstance. You need to choose on whom you employ this technique, on whom you do not. This is a very advanced, assertive technique and should only be used with certain clients. But with the clients that like deeper work and need the work on stretch, they will love this technique. Just please employ it judiciously. Now I'm going to add one more modification that makes it even more assertive. So again, please be even more careful on whom you employ this modification of this stroke here. Anya, I'd like to have you scoot up to the head end of the table so that your head actually goes off the table. And now let's see here, I want to make sure we have our 45, just bring your thighs a little back, 45 degrees of rotation. Let's get the hands over here if we can for the camera view. This is pointed up toward the ceiling. There's the semispinalis. There's nothing hard over here, nothing hit plastic, metal, wood that she's going to bang into. That's very important to check on a massage table. I'm going to go around to the front of the shoulder girdle, get myself in position. I'll go and traction the shoulder girdle down, and now I can perform the stroke here. Now, are you comfortable with your face being pushed into the table? We'll move off the table a little more. Good, thank you. And again, here we go, just like that. Show one more. Wonderful. You can scoop back down on the table to be comfortable, and I'll give you this cushion for your head. So this is a three-quarter side-lying position to work the posterior musculature of the neck, specifically transversospinalis musculature over the laminar groove, specifically in my mind I'm thinking semispinalis musculature.